Hi, my name is Jeffrey. I'm an amateur audio engineer, and I usually only make a video when I find or think of something unique, but I'm bending that rule a bit to show you a super useful, but often overlooked Studio One feature, bus folders. Which may sound boring, but bus folders are easy to set up and will save you time and aggravation. Now I say they're often overlooked, but I first saw bus folders on a Joe Gilder video where he used them while doing a mix. He also covers them in another video, but I can't find it right now. And then, as if to prove me right and wrong at the same time, Gregor covers bus folders in a recent video that he titled, Easy to Miss Features. So, in case you missed it, there are links to those videos in the description, but I'll tell you what inspired this video from an amateur's point of view, that is, in case you're doing the same sloppy, frustrating things I used to do, and then show you how to set up bus folders so that you can focus more in mixing and less on scrolling back and forth between channels. You can skip ahead if you want, but you'll appreciate bus folders better with a short background story. I recently decided to redo an old mix. It's a guitar cover of Tequila by The Champs. It's a fairly simple mix, drums, bass, a couple of rhythm guitars, a lead guitar, some hand clap tracks that I was playing with, and a vocal track. But when I opened the song, what I found was a mess. And that's when I realized how accustomed I'd become to using bus folders. Okay, here it is, and this is a little embarrassing, but I have a reference track, so that's good. And then I have channels here for the acoustic track, the semi-hollow body, and then I have three tracks for the lead guitar. Apparently I was doing a lot of comp work there. I have the vocal, and then all these channels are for the drums. Now we'll scroll over to the right some more. And I've got an acoustic bass. I've got my claps that I was experimenting with, having several tracks running claps. Then I've got the snare, snare, ah, okay, no. <laughs> so this is a bus channel here, and here's a little bonus tip. Always name your bus channels using uppercase letters so that you can tell a bus from just a regular channel. So I've got my snare bus here, and then it routes back to drums. Oh uh, no, it's routing over to here to this drum bus. <laughs> All right, this is messy. And then I've got the lead guitar bus, bus for the rhythm guitars, and then a bus for reverb, and a bus for the hand claps. All right, you can see what a mess this is. And what happened while I was mixing was I kept scrolling back and forth between my buses and then back to individual channels and then back to the buses. And the really bad thing is, is that I like using the scroll wheel and if I'd accidentally put the scroll wheel where it didn't belong, I'd end up changing something. So you can imagine, I got very frustrated doing this. Okay, let's see what the same song looks like with just a little bit of cleanup, but primarily bus folders. There we go. Clean and concise. All my buses and individual channels are neatly laid out on one screen. And that even includes an additional bus channel that I added because I'm playing around with mid-side EQ, but that's a separate topic. And yeah, I mixed down those three lead solo tracks into one track and channel here, but I could have also set that up with a bus folder. The great thing is that now I can make bus level changes, or say I want to look at the kick drum, I can open up the drum bus, and there's my kick drum, there's my snares, but I still have visibility to the bus, for drums, and all my other buses and channels for everything else. So I can easily open and close this if I want to look at my rhythm guitars. There are both the channels for my rhythm guitars, and of course this is the bus. It's just so much cleaner. Really, the only annoying thing now are my color choices, but let's set that aside, and I'll show you how simple it is to set up bus folders. The first and most important thing to do is open the console, either with F3 or use the pull-down menu. And then over here on the left, click on this little wrench icon and check to make sure that you have link expansion and visibility of folder tracks checked. Now click outside the box and be aware that with that setting, tracks in a closed folder won't appear in the console. I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment and why you don't really need to worry about it. Okay. Here we have a couple tracks. I'll select the first one and then control click for the second one. 
and now right click and go down here to where it says pack folder. That packs both of those tracks into this folder and since it's a folder we're going to use uppercase and we'll just call it rhythm guitars. Okay this is important. Notice here that because we chose the link expansion option earlier the channels are hidden in the console unless we open the folder. That won't be a problem in a minute but you should be aware of it. Let's go ahead and open the folder and now we see we've got our tracks in here but it would be nice if they were all the same color. So let's just click here and pick a color. And now everything lines up. And with the folder selected, if we go over here and look in the inspector window, we see our tracks nestled in there nicely and not a whole lot more. But this is where the magic comes. Because if you go to this pull down here where it says none, click on that, and then go down and click on add bus channel. That instantly turns this folder into a bus and all of the tracks are now routed into that bus. And since it's a bus, we can drop effects into it if we want to. Go down here, and I'll just pick something at random. And there you go, you've got all these effects in the bus. So everything out of these channels will route over to the bus and be processed through there. And the other cool thing is, if you close the console, you still have visibility to the bus. You can look at your individual tracks, but if you go, well, how did I have the bus set up? There it is. Let's open the console back up. And then the other part of this, like I showed you earlier, is to come down here to the little folder icon. You can open and close the folder, either here in the console or, or back up in the song window. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay, and let's say you want to add another track in there. I'm pressing F6 to open up the instruments. Let's grab, let's say, Presence. Drop it into its own track. Okay, and you can see it's routed to main down here. But let's put it into the folder and see what happens. There, it changes color to match the folder, and it's also routed out to our Rhythm Guitars bus. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Next, let's say you add a multi-channel instrument track like Impact or Easy Drummer. We'll do Impact because it comes with Studio One, and I also found a little quirk around the color coding. All right, so let's grab Impact and drag it in. And then let's load this base kit drum package. Okay, and as soon as you do that, you see you get all these extra channels in here. And just for neatness, I'm going to speed through and give these all names so that they mean something. All right, you may be wondering how this works because there aren't a bunch of tracks here to pack into a folder, but it doesn't matter. Right click, go down, click pack folder, packs them all in. We'll call this drums and go ahead and set up the bus channel. And then here's the kind of odd thing is when you open this up and say I try to set all the colors to red, it really only affects the bus folder and the very first channel in here. So what you have to do is select the bus folder and then shift click on the very last channel and select your color from there. Not a big deal, but don't waste a whole lot of time worrying about it, that it doesn't work like everything else. Okay, that's it. Bus folders won't change the sound of your mix, but they will make it easier to focus on mixing instead of scrolling back and forth trying to find channels and buses. And that, in turn, I hope, makes mixing more fun for you. Again, this is Jeffrey. Happy mixing, my friends.